Who's ready to receive from the Word of God? Awesome stuff. What powerful, powerful praise and worship at the beginning of a service. I want us to turn our attention tonight to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 23 to 26. Acts chapter 16, verses 23 to 26. In fact, we'll read from verse 25. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. I want you to notice over there, it says, and they sang praises to God. And immediately the doors were opened and every one of the bands were loosed. I want you to turn with me also to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. I'm preaching tonight on the subject and the doors were opened. It says here in verse 4, And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. Let's pray. Father God, tonight I pray that you would anoint your word to our hearts. We thank you for the song that we've just witnessed a few moments ago. What a wonderful world. Thank you, God, that you have made an amazing world. Thank you, Father God, you've made an incredible world. As we look at the flowers, as we see the sun rises and the sun sets. And so, Father, tonight I pray that we would have doors in our lives opened. We pray, Lord, tonight as we would find a key, we would find a weapon tonight that is so powerful that the enemy is not able to withstand us any longer, but we are able to be liberated and freed by your presence tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you to anoint your word to our hearts. In Jesus' name we ask, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Just a few moments ago, we saw that beautiful song, and we heard the words, and to me that is a classic. Everybody, I'm sure everyone knows this song by Louis Armstrong. What a wonderful world. To me, it summarizes what life is all about. It capsulates for me what God intended for our lives to be. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Life is for living. Every one of us, God has given us life for the living. Well, I believe that for a child of God, for every single human being, every day ought to be as we get out of our beds in the morning, it should be a thank you God for another day. Amen. It ought to be a fantastic moment to get out of bed. You're not able to get out of bed fast enough because it's an incredible, glorious day that God has made. Think about the magnificence of sunrises and sunsets. Think about the chuckle of babies. Think about the wonders of creation. We've been learning about it with the children every Sunday morning as we've been showing pictures of outer space and of planets and stars and, and of, of plants and flowers. It is a wonderful world. God's intention for us is life is for living. I believe that's God's plan. I believe that's God's purpose. I believe that is God's desire. But the same scripture John 10.10 10 gives a little portion before, and it says the thief comes but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. His nature is to detract. His nature is to subtract. His nature is to remove. And so as you heard the words of that song, as, you, as you're hearing what I'm saying right now for you, you might be thinking, well, what wonderful world is this? What are you talking about a wonderful world? For you, maybe it's just one hardship after another. It's just one struggle after another. The question is, how do you handle your living? It seems like it is a one-way struggle. When I talk about getting out of bed in the morning and thanking God for it, it's for you. It's, well, what do I want to do that for? I would rather just stay in bed and hope that the world just goes away. It almost seems like the place of dog eat dog. It's big people beating up little people. It's the large wiping out the little. It's uneven odds. And I want to say that's what happens in the world. But I believe tonight that in God, it's not the same. 
God has another principle to apply to our lives tonight. He's got a weapon. In fact, it says there in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 that we have weapons of our warfare that are not carnal. What God wants to give us tonight is something that takes the biggest person in this place and the smallest and makes them equal. He gives us something that will take the smallest person in this place and if they will operate this key tonight, if they will take this thing tonight, they can be very powerful in God. Just like the oldest and the youngest in this place. Every one of us are in the same place when it comes to God. It doesn't matter how weak you are tonight. It doesn't matter how strong you are tonight. These are weapons that give us equal opportunity. In fact, the Bible says that even the smallest child is able to put the enemy to flight if we take a hold of these weapons. Now, there are a number of different weapons that we can talk about tonight. We've been talking about them in our children's ministry. There are things like the blood of Jesus. How many know that the blood of Jesus is a weapon that God has given the church? I want to tell you that when you cover yourself with the blood, the enemy cannot come near your dwelling. I want to tell you another weapon is the name of Jesus. When you call on the name of Jesus, it is a powerful weapon. It is able to cause the enemy to flee in our lives. I want to tell you tonight, we have a weapon called the Word of God that is able to put the enemy to flight if we're able to use it. These are weapons that God has given us. But I want to zero in tonight on one weapon, and every one of us are able to use this weapon tonight. And tonight's message, I want to end it where we will have a time where we will put this weapon into operation. It's found in Acts chapter 16, and it's found there in verse 25, as you read a moment ago. Listen to what it says there in verse 25. It says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. It says, And they sang praises to God. I want you just quickly for a moment to rewind the story. I want you to see how this picture came to pass. We find them in a prison. Yes, we find them praising God, but something happened before they got to this moment. It begins with an unjust arrest of Paul and Silas. They had done something good, and I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where you've done something good and it's turned out bad. You might have thought you were doing something good, and instead of getting the praises and the pats on the back, you got a whole barrage of negative impact. In fact, you might have got to the place and said, well, this is it. Shove this. I'm never doing this again for anybody. Paul and Silas were in that situation. They had come to a young girl who was operating by a spirit of divination. She was giving in, uh, supernatural information, and it wasn't from God. And so Paul and Silas addressed the spirit of divination, and this girl is delivered. At the moment she was delivered, you would have thought everybody would have come and said, Paul and Silas, fantastic, thank you very much. No, it had the opposite effect. They get thrown into prison. They get stuck into prison, not only thrown in prison, but they get beaten. I want you to see the prison house. It's not our Australian prisons. Now, where we come from in South Africa, we have prisons. We have some prisons that, that you don't want to go to prison. I think of here some of the prisons, it sounds like, from what I've heard from some policemen, and that it's almost like five-star treatment. This prison was not like that. This was a dungeon. This was a place where they had their legs and their arms fastened. You could almost see them sitting up there in stocks. They were immobilized. Their arms and legs were immobilized. They were down in some dirty dungeon. They were not able to release themselves at any time. They were stuck in this place. You talk about stinky. You talk about smelly, dark and dingy, stench-ridden, no comforts. Can you see the picture tonight? This is where Paul and Silas find themselves. For doing something good, they end up in a situation like that. But I want to tell you, it's not the situation that they find themselves in that we want to concern ourselves with. It's what they do in the situation. Because I want to say tonight, many people find themselves in situations like this. You can talk about your own dungeons. You can talk about your own prisons. You can talk about your own bonds that hold you tonight. But there's something that they do that is not normal. The Bible says that other prisoners were cursing. Other prisoners were swearing, and they might have been in that situation. But Paul and Silas do something at midnight, not at 9 o'clock at night, but at the time when everybody else is sleeping, they begin to praise God. 
The Bible says that they begin to sing praises. In the midst of a disheartening situation, they begin to sing praises. And the Bible says that something happens. There is an earthquake that happens that shakes the prison. The doors are flung open and the chains fall off and every other prisoner is released. I want to tell you tonight, saints of God, that when you begin to praise God, your praise has power to release you and it has power to release others if you begin to praise God tonight. It is a key that God gives us. The smallest child in this place tonight who will begin to praise God can see powerful things happen in their lives. The oldest person over here who might have the frailest voice is able to lift their voice tonight and see God come through on their behalf. It releases people. And so tonight I want to just share a few thoughts before we come to that time of praise. I want to stir some faith into your heart tonight that you would begin to trust God. That in a few moments time we're able to lift our hands and begin to praise God out of our situations. How many believe that God can do it? Number one, praise elevates us into the presence and the power of God. Look at Paul and Silas. They knew how to lift their hearts above their troubles and enter into God's presence and experience His power. When we begin to praise God, we begin to give God a channel through which His power is able to operate in our circumstances. It doesn't matter what your circumstance is tonight. It may be sickness, it might be disease, it might be bondage, it might be family situations. Praise gives God something to work with. It gives God something to work with in your situation. I love the words of a song many years ago. It says, when you're up against a struggle and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fear, praise the Lord, because God can work with those who praise Him. Do you know tonight that when you begin to lift your voice and begin to praise God, you give God something to work with in your life? You give God something. Paul and Silas, it didn't matter that they were stuck in prison. It didn't matter that they couldn't move their hands and their arms, but they began to, they're probably shaking their body around a bit, saying, yes, praise God. Praise releases us tonight. Praise gives God something. It elevates us into the very presence of God tonight. You see, we've got a choice tonight. Israel, I want you to see them in bondage in Babylon. 70 years, the Bible says that they took their harps, they hung them on the willow trees, and the, the thought and the choice they had was this. They said, well, how can we sing a song in a strange land? How can we sing praises to God when we're going through what we're going through? You might be saying the same thing tonight. How can I praise God when I'm going through the circumstance? How can I praise God when I'm going through tough situations? You see, the choice tonight is this. You can either sit down and mope or get up and praise God. That's our choice. There's only two choices. Sit down and mope or get up and praise God. I want to tell you, when you begin to praise God, something will happen. When you sit down and mope, you'll stay in that situation. God wants to bring us out tonight. He wants to do something powerful in our lives if we'll only give Him the chance. The Bible says in Psalm 22, 3, God inhabits the praises of His people. What does God do? He inhabits the very atmosphere of our praises. As you were praising God in the beginning, do you know that God gets excited about our praises? Do you know that when you begin to lift your voice, it doesn't matter how small it is in the beginning, it begins to give God something to work with. And it begins to create the atmosphere through which God can work. It causes a move of faith in your heart and my heart tonight. God dwells in the atmosphere of praise. See, a lot of people, they leave, they, they begin to praise God as they leave His presence. Some of us might have come here tonight and we've come ready to be churned up. We might have come here tonight and we want to get switched on and maybe we'll walk out saying, oh, what a fantastic service. But I want to tell you, God says, no, I don't want you to come and get something. I want you to bring something so that I can do something in your life. That's the difference. When you come with a psalm, when you come with a spiritual thing in your heart, God can take that and he begins to work with it. God dwells in the atmosphere of our praises. He doesn't want us to come in the place dry, but he wants to come and get us as a praises, as a vehicle of faith tonight, which brings us into his presence and power. It's like a gateway into his presence tonight. Psalm 100, 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I wonder how many saints of God walked in here tonight saying, I've come to praise God. I wonder how many people walked in the other night saying, God, I want to praise you because you are worthy of all praise. 
enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise is not a response to the presence of God, but the presence of God responds when we praise. Our praise invokes the power and the presence of God. Do you understand tonight, saints of God, that when we make this place a place of habitation for God, God can do awesome things in your life. But it means you've got to get up and start praising Him. It means you've got to get up and say, God, I'm going to do it. Yes, I may just sing in a false key. Who cares? God says it's praise. Every one of us can do it tonight in this place. So what is praise? Our kids will tell you that they've learned all the different things of praise. They've learned about halal. They've learned about shakar, which means to bow down. They've learned about yada, which means to raise your hands. We've been doing it for eight weeks. And how powerful it is. We're watching the level of the children's worship and praise begin to rise on a Sunday morning. Praise means to commend. It means to applaud or to magnify God. All you're doing when you are praising is you're magnifying God. You're saying, God, you are great. You are big. You are awesome. You are powerful. You are saying that praise doesn't center on your, your, your situation, but it centers on God who is bigger than your situation tonight. Praise God. Praise is centering our attention of God and His resources rather than on our circumstances. How many know tonight that when you center on God, God's got more than you've got? Do you think God can take care of your sickness? Who thinks tonight that God can take care of financial difficulties? Who can think tonight that God can take care of bondages? He's got more resources at His disposal than you have got problems. He can come beyond your problems tonight. It centers your focus on a God who's got more than enough tonight. I'm so glad that when I come into his presence, he doesn't say, sorry, I've just run out of that one. It's not like when you go to the shopping center and you look down the aisle and it's sold out. Our God never sells out. He's always on the throne. He's always on the throne tonight. Paul and Silas, they looked beyond their circumstances. They had every reason to get into a pity party, and maybe tonight that's where you've been. Every time somebody asks you how you're doing, you tell them. Every time you, they ask you, well, how did, oh, I want to tell you about my bad situation. I want to tell you, praise looks beyond your situation and says, my God is able. Come on now. That's right. They had every reason. They had every reason to be in the doldrums. They were in the bottom. They were in the, in, in the pit. But you know what they did? The Bible says they put off the garment of heaviness and they put on the garment of praise. <laughs> if I can get in this one. Looking cool. There has to be a putting off and there has to be a putting on. You cannot praise God when you've got fear in your heart. Faith must arise in your heart tonight. You cannot hang on to that little thing that's bugging you and still try to praise God. You've got to say, get out the way, I'm going God's way. It's putting off that garment of heaviness. It's putting off that garment of, of complaints. It's putting off those negative things and putting on the garment of praise and saying, my God, I'm able. If you don't get excited, that's fine, I will. Praise transports us into the realm of the supernatural. Who can do this? You can do this. Turn the person next to you and tell them you can do this. <laughs> Psalm 89 verse 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your counsel. I want to tell you praise is a noisy thing. Praise is a joyful thing. Praise is a powerful thing. It is a weapon that God has given us. It's a key that he's able to open in your hearts and open in your lives tonight. Praise can be verbal expressions tonight. Praise can be thanksgiving. Praise can be singing. Praise can be shouting. Praise can be dancing. Praise can be clapping. Praise can be lifting your hands. Praise can bless God. Praise is like a fragrance. You can do a thousand and one things to praise God tonight. I want to tell you, if you feel the Holy Ghost, you can pray in that other language and you give God something to work with in your life. Praise is a lifestyle. Praise is not an event. Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
Do you know that praise is not an event, but it's a continuous, continuous thing? Okay. Quinton, what's going on over here? What is this? I've, what? Come, I've come to bring my sack of rice. A sack of rice? Yeah, it's in the Bible, to bring your sack of rice. No, it says a sacrifice. Don't bring your sack of rice to church. Bring your sacrifice of praise. The Bible says that our praise is like a sacrifice. Do you know what sacrifice means, folks? It means there are times when I don't want to do it. Sacrifice means there's times I don't want to raise my hands. Sacrifice says, in spite of the fact, I'm going to raise my hands. Sacrifice says tonight... It doesn't, I don't want to raise this voice, but I'm going to raise this voice to God. Sacrifice says tonight, everything inside me says, keep on to my problem. But sacrifice says, I will rejoice in my God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be continually in my mouth. <laughs> praise is an expression of faith and a declaration of victory. When you praise God, you're bringing God into your situation and you're making your problem smaller and your God bigger. How many know tonight our God's a big God? How many think that God can do it in your life tonight? Sacrifice of praise is what he says. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth, it says there. What we do when we're praising is declaring that we believe that God is with us and that he's in control. Romans chapter 8 verse 28, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Praise is a sacrifice. It's not every day that you feel like praising. It's not every day that you want to do it, but you will say in your heart tonight, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. His praise will be in my mouth. As we sing some more songs in a few moments, I will bless the Lord. I will say that my God is a good God. I will say that my God is an amazing God. I will say tonight that my God is a great God. I will say tonight that my God is in control. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 verse 13, 15 says, or 13, 15 says, Offering the sacrifice of praise to God continually. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Do you know that your lips and your mouth hold the power of life and death? The Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. We open this mouth and we condemn ourselves. We open this mouth and we constantly are in the negative. But if we will open it tonight and start letting words of life come out of it. The Bible says that out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let's start having some faith in our heart tonight that God is able. Let's start putting it into practice tonight and say, God, I will bless you. I will praise you tonight because you are an amazing God. I will not have seeds of death, but I will call seeds of life. The fruit of my lips will spring from the content of my heart, even if it is a sacrifice tonight. Even if it says tonight, I don't know how to raise this hand, I'm not able to raise it. My God, I'm going to put it up tonight and I'm going to say, heal this hand in the name of Jesus. If you've got a back problem tonight as we're praising, you're going to put yourself down and say, God, I'm going to touch the toes. You don't need to have somebody lay hands on you tonight. You can praise your way out of bondage. You can praise your way out of sickness. You can praise your way out of circumstances tonight. It's a place of praise. It's an atmosphere of praise tonight. Every step... Instead of it being a step of, well, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to start saying, I will bless the Lord. My God is able. God is able. Constantly putting my foot out there and saying, God is able to do what he can in my life. The fruit of my lips will bless him. The last thing I want to mention tonight is praise sends the enemy running. If praise manifests God's presence... If praise magnifies God and minimizes the enemy, if praise manifests the presence of God, then it also repels the presence of the enemy. Do you know that tonight, that when you praise, when you've got faith in your heart, you can't have fear? Do you know that when you've got praise in your mouth, you cannot have doubt? Because what you're doing is you're starting to make one bigger and one smaller. How many know that our God's a big God? Who wants to make God big in this place tonight? We're going to do it in our praises in literally a few moments' time. As you begin to praise, the enemy runs. Satan hates praises. 
He fears the power of the name of Jesus. He flees from the presence of God. Can you imagine tonight as we begin to make this an atmosphere of praise, what happens when God moves in, the Spirit of God raise up a standard, the enemy's got to move out. Praise invokes the presence of God. The presence of God repels the enemy. Psalm 50 verse 23, Whoever offers praise glorifies me. To him that orders his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. That word salvation is the deliverance of God. You see, when you offer praise, God brings the deliverance. We've got to give God something to work with in our lives tonight, folks. 2 Chronicles 20, 22 says, When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the enemy. When you praise God tonight, the enemy runs. So tonight, we've got to spend some time praising God. It doesn't take long for God to move. It doesn't take long to praise God. You can raise hands, you can stamp, you can jump, you can shout, you can do whatever you want to do tonight, but we're going to cause this place to be an atmosphere of praise, that as we begin to praise, you're going to praise your way out of sickness. You're going to praise your way out of depression. You're going to praise your way out of problems tonight. You're going to praise your way out of stress. Because as you begin to praise, what you're doing is setting a stage for God to move. So let's stand together right now. As the musicians come forward right now, we're going to begin to set the place. Who believes tonight that God's going to do something in their life? Let me see your hand. You're going to take this word tonight and you're going to begin to do it tonight. We're going to spend a few moments tonight praising God. We're going to cause an atmosphere of praise.